Today, we're previewing Nikon's newest lens. This week, Nikon announced production of, and I'm going to read it so I get it exactly right, the 70-300 f4.5-5.6 to E E D V R A F P. So what does all that mean? We'll break it down. First, 70 to 300. That's simply the amount it'll zoom. It's pretty common. We've seen it before in many, many lenses. 300 is nice because it'll give you a lot of reach if you're shooting something like sports or wildlife or events that you're super far away from. And 70 is close enough that you can shoot headshots and stuff that's close to you as well. Now, the f4.5 to 5.6. That's your f-stop and the amount that it'll open up to let light in. The lower the f-stop, the more light it'll allow in. So at 70 millimeters, it'll be at f4.5. And at 300 millimeters, the biggest you can go is f5.6. Now, if you're shooting outdoor sports or outdoor wildlife or something like that, then that's perfectly fine. But if you're inside, that could be an issue. If you're shooting inside of like a gymnasium, basketball, or a play, something like that, then you could have an issue with this f-stop. F4.5 could be workable depending on how much you want to push the ISO, but you're going to start running into some issues when you're at 300 millimeters and F5.6. But again, if you're outside, that's perfectly workable. The other effect that a higher f-stop gives you is it won't give you as good of bokeh in the background, which is basically just blurred out. If, say, I'm in focus, how much the stuff behind me, the trees and the fence and the people are behind me are blown out. Now, if the camera is super close to the subject and the background is farther away from the person being photographed, then f5.6 will actually probably be okay. It'll still be nice and blurred. But if the camera is farther away from the subject and the background is closer to the subject, at f5.6, you're probably not going to be able to blur anything. The aperture will also go down to f32 to f40, which is nice. Okay, so so far we have the 70 to 300, f4.5 to 5.6, E. Now we're going to explain the E. E stands for electromagnetic diaphragm. Basically, it's built into the barrel of the lens, and it's meant to provide more control of the aperture. The next part of the title is ED. That stands for Extra Low Dispersion Lens. It's pretty common in Nikon's products. Next is VR, which is Vibration Reduction. That's also pretty common in Nikon's products, especially when you're at 300 millimeters. It does come with Normal and Sport modes, which is nice and a step up from other lenses. Now, AFP. AF is Autofocus. And the P stands for Pulse Motor. What that's supposed to do is it's supposed to be faster and quieter than the old AF-S system. A huge benefit to this lens is it's FX. What that means is it can work on FX bodies, which are full frame bodies. Many lenses in the 70 to 300 millimeter range are built with DX and cropped sensor bodies in mind. So it's nice to have one built for FX full frame. But if you do have a DX body, this lens will work perfectly fine with your body as well. It has a minimum focus distance of 1.2 meters, 3.94 feet. It has 18 elements and 14 groups with a 67 millimeter filter and lens cap. Also, if you're a member of Nikon Pro Services, NPS, this lens is worth 150 points. The size of the lens itself is 3.2 inches by 5.7 and it weighs just 24 ounces. It's currently available for pre-order on Nikon's website at $749.95 or on other websites like B&H or Roberts for $746.95. So, who's it for? If you're not ready to make the jump to a 70 to 200 2.8 lens yet, this is a good option. Or if you just need the extra reach with the extra 100 millimeters, this will work as well. When Nikon designed this lens, they had to have outdoors in mind. It's built for outdoor sports, football, baseball, softball, lacrosse. It's a great lens for wildlife. Or if you're just traveling around, you don't want to take a whole bunch of lenses with you, this is a nice range. I wouldn't recommend this lens if you're just walking around as a street photographer, just because you're going to need some wider shots, way wider than 70 millimeters will give you. It's also not great if you want to use it indoors. You can make it work indoors, but you're going to have to boost the ISO. If there's something that I missed or you have a question, feel free to comment below or you can message me. As always, be sure to subscribe and thanks for watching.